to The Hypnotist, the show that gives you inside access to cutting-edge hypnosis with real clients facing genuine issues. Brought to you by the hypnotherapist demanded by celebrities, CEOs, and even royalty, Adam Cox. These recordings took place live from Adam's Clinic in London's world-famous Harley Street. So, get yourself comfortable and enjoy today's episode of The Hypnotist. And take a deep breath in. And as you breathe in, just imagine you're breathing in a feeling of calm and relaxation. And as you exhale, just imagine that any tension, stress or anxiety is slowly leaving your body. That's right. Breathing in relaxation. And as you exhale, just close your eyes if they aren't already closed. Continue to breathe in that feeling of calm and relaxation. And as you breathe out, continue to imagine that tension, stress, or anxiety just leaving your body now. That's it. And I wonder if you can use your imagination to imagine what it would be like to be on the seat of a plane. Just imagine you're sat there in a row of three seats, and the two seats next to you are completely empty. And I want you to imagine that you are about to embark on a long flight, perhaps seven or eight hours, and it's an evening flight. I want you to imagine that you are looking forward to being able to spread out and relax on these three chairs, to be able to just enjoy sleeping while you're flying to your destination. Just get a sense of the optimism, the feeling of enjoying the idea of going to sleep. And then I want you to notice that Two new passengers enter the plane and they are carrying with them a baby and the baby is loud and is crying. And I want you to imagine thinking just inside your own mind, feeling sorry for whoever the poor person would be that ends up sitting next to that couple with that crying baby. And I want you to notice that they are walking down the aisle and they are getting closer and closer to you. I want you to imagine, imagine what you would be thinking at the very point where you realize that they are going to be sitting exactly right next to you. There they are with a crying baby and I want you to get a sense, a sense of how you would feel in that moment if you genuinely thought that it would be impossible really for you to sleep if there was a crying baby immediately next to you. As they approach, I want you to make space for them, perhaps standing up, enabling them to find their way to their seats, getting a sense that for the rest of this journey, they will be next to you and the baby will be with them. And I want you to get a sense that although you're being polite and helpful, inside you're really dreading what the next few hours could be like as this baby continues to scream. They try everything to soothe this baby. See them as they give the baby a bottle. They try giving a favorite toy to that baby and yet the baby continues to cry, to scream. I want you to get a sense of what your options are. You can spend the next eight hours giving them dirty looks, scoffing at their failed attempts to just quieten their child. Letting them know that this kind of behavior is absolutely unacceptable on a plane. Alternatively, you could join them in trying to quiet the child. Perhaps playing games with the child like peekaboo, giving the child your phone to fiddle with or play with, doing anything to attempt to just shut the child up. Or, or imagine that you could choose to do what you would otherwise do in an overnight flight. Just accepting the sounds, not as 
an irritating annoyance, as something that ruins or disturbs your flight. But perhaps, perhaps you could just take in the sounds of the child as they are, recognizing that the child is doing exactly what children do. Not wanting to like the sounds the child is making, but also not needing the sounds not to be there. And all the while, you're noticing that no matter how long the child cries, he won't cry forever. And that wanting him to quieten down will never be what's needed to actually make the child quiet. I want this thought to go through your mind right now of accepting, accepting that there is something undesirable, but just knowing, knowing that this won't maintain for very long. And notice that by accepting the sounds as they are, without becoming irritated or annoyed, very soon the sounds just kind of fade into the background. And I want you to imagine what it would be like to feel deeper and deeper relaxed, even if there was that child continuing to cry. That even though there is an external noise, albeit not pleasant, you are able to just focus on your breathing and almost, almost consider it a challenge to maintain your own emotional state, to be focused on you, your breathing, and an overall sense of increasing sleepiness, even while you're on that plane. And I want you to do that now. Imagine being in that seat of that plane, still hearing the child crying, but not being disturbed in any way of the child crying. Feel your body relax deeper. Your arms and legs are getting heavier and loose. Your breathing is getting deeper and more from your diaphragm than your chest. As you continue to hear the child screaming, it doesn't bother you as much as it did before and is becoming less and less important to you with each and every passing second. And I want you to imagine what it would be like to just drift off to sleep in that plain chair. As the baby continues to scream, the noise becomes less and less relevant as your thoughts go inward rather than external. And I want you to get a sense of those things that happen in your life that tend to disturb you, annoy you, irritate you. And just like the noise of the baby, the screams, the cries, at one point could disturb and perhaps ruin your whole flight. I want you to imagine that there are many things in your life that perhaps you're not in control of, that your reaction is to complain, to moan, to be irritated or annoyed, triggered in some way. But what if you were to simply control what you can control, your physical proximity, your attention, your own focus, and to accept those things that you're not in control of, to allow them to be as they are without negatively affecting you in any way. Imagine just in the same way that the child's voice is something that can be background noise or something that prevents you from doing what you want to do. How many other things in your life could be the same? Could be things that move from being a source of irritation and annoyance to just things that happen to be there. Because many people perhaps live in streets or neighborhoods close to perhaps a train line. And every now and then a train, perhaps with the noise accompanying that train, will go past. And to people that are visiting that home, they might be very annoyed, disturbed, by the sound of that train. But for the people that live there, they've become accustomed to that sound of that train. 
to the point that what would be very annoying and irritating to a guest is simply background noise to someone that has experienced that for a while. And from this point onwards, I want you to imagine that these things that have been annoying you will simply become background noise. They will affect you less and less with each and every passing day to the extent that you will be able to be calm, centered, at peace, even when there are things going on that would really annoy other people. Because if you can be calm when there is chaos going on around you, that will give you options, abilities, a sense of stability when people will then look to you as a source, a source of stability around the chaos. Allow this idea to be almost like a pebble being thrown into a pond. Allow the ripples on the surface to influence every part of your life. Every part where things that have been annoying you will now become less and less significant. You will accept them for what they are, and that is simply what they are, rather than something deliberately designed to ruin your experience, to affect your mood, your emotional state. Allow the ripples on the surface of that pond, that lake, to be like ripples in the timeline of your life, meaning that these things will become less and less significant until they are just background noise. In a few moments time, I'm going to count from one to 10 to awaken you, and you will awaken first on the plane and then in real life. And it doesn't matter if the baby is still continuing to cry or not, it will not change your emotional state because your emotional state wasn't affected by the crying baby anyway. You were still able to enjoy deep, relaxing, meaningful sleep, the kind of sleep that rejuvenates, even with the crying baby there in the background, because it was simply background noise. You will awaken feeling positive, empowered, focused and resourceful, and you will notice that things that used to bother you are bothering you less and less as each and every day passes, starting to count to awaken you. One, two, three, waking up. Four, five, six, more alert. Seven, eight, open your eyes, open your eyes. Nine, ten, wide awake, wide awake, wide awake. Thank you for listening to The Hypnotist with Adam Cox, the show that gives you inside access to cutting-edge hypnosis with real clients facing genuine issues. To automatically receive the latest episodes, please subscribe. If you'd like to support the show, please share this episode with just one friend you think it could help. And if this episode helped you, please leave us a five-star review.